Hi everybody. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia and I'm the Fishing Mommy. Today's video is all about restoring and replacing the rotten plywood that I found when I bought my first boat. Now to give you guys a little bit of background, I recently bought my very first boat and it is an old one. <laughs> it's a 1984 Grady White Overnighter 204C. So basically all that means is it's a 20 foot Grady White boat. Grady Whites are well known to be super high quality boats, but with any 37 year old boat, obviously you're gonna get into some things that need replacement and repair. And that's what I found with my boat. So one of the major things that I realized when I got the boat home and really went through it with a fine tooth comb is that a lot of the plywood that formed the cuddy cabin walls was actually rotted at the bottom. I realized that repairing it was really not the most viable option. It really needed to come out and be replaced. So as I took it out, I realized there was lots of teak that needs to be restored on the boat as well. So what I did was I removed the teak and I'm gonna do a separate video that shows you how I restored all that teak wood and it came out fantastic. That part is done. So that's gonna be a second video. I'm gonna link that right up here. Um, so take a look at that if you're interested in how to restore the teak wood. But this video is all about how I'm replacing all of the plywood on my actual cutty cabin and how I'm finishing it out to be waterproof and last for a really long time. Hopefully another 37 years. The first thing I did in this process was actually just obviously remove all of the walls. So in order to do this, I had to um, unscrew hundreds of screws. And one of the most important things that I did in this project was as I was removing pieces, whether they were bracing pieces or pieces of teak or pieces of plywood, I took all of the hardware from a specific section and I would put it in its own little Ziploc bag and I would mark it with the exact location where it came from. For instance, cuddy cabin, port side, top brace or something like that. And I'll put a little video here to show you exactly how that looks. That I think has made such a difference in the ease of putting everything back where it goes and getting it right the first time. So that was the first step, removing the actual cabin walls. The second step was removing all of the teak wood trim pieces that were actually attached to the plywood pieces. There are a number of little um, pieces of teak on here that I need to take off and label so that I remember exactly where they came from and what they do. Okay, here's the cutty side trim off. This is the door frame here, as you can see. I'm just gonna mark this right on the piece so that I know where it came from. Next up, we have the five screws for the footrest, which is a teak footrest. This swinging door is on the port side, so that's how I'm gonna mark the footrest once I get it off of here. This is how I'm keeping track of all of the hardware pieces. I put each one in a small Ziploc baggie. These are the snack size bags. And uh, then I mark it with something that I'll understand. Cuddy swinging door, main trim, port side footrest, interior of the swinging door that goes with that, and then trim, top of swinging door. And that's how I'm doing it. The teak wood restoration is going to be shown in a separate video. Once that video is finished, I'll link it down in the description if you're interested in checking out how that went. Step three was making templates out of cardboard. So what I did was I took the old pieces and they were definitely not, you know, just rectangular pieces. There were some weird cutouts in here, uh, partially to accommodate the actual shape of the hull, but also where the previous owner had made cutouts in order to run wires and things like that. Laid them out on large pieces of sturdy cardboard. I traced around them and made a pattern, just like if you were gonna make a dress or anything else that you were going to template. So what I've done is actually lay out each of the plywood pieces that I needed to template. I've made a cardboard template. Obviously this is a little bit challenging because of the rot. <laughs> the whole bottom section of this one is rotted away. So I'm doing the best I can at estimating, you know, and measuring. Uh, similar on this little piece here, a lot of rot, as you can see, that's in pretty bad shape. So I made a cardboard template. 
And then here's the third piece. Some wacky cutouts on this one, which I've got sketched out um, on my cardboard. But I'm going to actually wait and cut those out of the wood um, after I get the main plywood piece cut, just so that I don't have to make unnecessary cuts or have unnecessary holes. I don't know how accurately that was done in the first place. So that is where I am right now. Then I took the cardboard patterns back into the boat and I sort of reconstructed the cabin walls with the cardboard just to check the fit. This piece was a little bit tricky because some of the wood had rotted away so much from the bottom that I had to do a little bit of guessing and measuring um, on the back end just to make sure that it would fit. But I was able to do that and so my cardboard templates worked out great. Step four was getting all my materials together that I would need and that includes marine plywood, epoxy, a jigsaw, and a sander, and sandpaper. The epoxy, obviously there were some other things that I needed with the epoxy, um, and I'll show you those right here. Uh, rollers and a roller handle, the little um, mixing buckets, paint sticks to mix, and of course the little tray that you use for your roller. So those are the primary materials that I needed for the epoxy. And of course the epoxy and the hardener themselves. I'll talk a little bit more about the epoxy later on when I get to that stage. Next up, we did some cutting with a jigsaw. Now to be really, really honest with you guys, I didn't start with, I didn't start with the jigsaw. I actually started with a different tool and realized that it wasn't gonna work out so well. <laughs> and so I lost some time having to reorient and I also had to buy another piece of plywood because I messed up the first one. Um, however, that's okay. My husband uh, stepped in and helped me out with the jigsaw because he's got a really steady hand and his cuts were nice and clean. So I appreciate his help. <laughs> As you can see here, he did a really nice job. The next step was to sand all the rough cuts smooth and sand out any imperfections that I could see in the actual surface of the plywood itself. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um... <laughs> grit. I wasn't looking for a silky smooth finish because of course I'm going to put three coats of epoxy plus paint and they'll be sanding in the meantime but I just wanted a nice fairly smooth surface and I wanted to get all those burrs off and make sure the edges were smooth. So the sanding only took maybe about an hour or so for all of this wood. So after we finished sanding now it's time to get into the epoxy stage. I used West Systems 105 and 205 epoxy and hardener, and I am really happy with how they're working out. They are really easy to measure out, really easy to use. Uh, the working time isn't super long if it's warm outside, uh, which it was in the high 70s when I was working on this. So it gave me probably about 12 or 15 minutes of working time which was fine because I was mixing up small batches as I went. So what I did uh, was gather the materials first. So as I mentioned, I used the 105 and 205 epoxy and hardener from West Systems. I'll link that down below, by the way, in case you're interested in getting the same thing. That is the fast curing epoxy and hardener combination. Then I got foam rollers. You want a thin nap foam roller. You don't want something super thick that holds too much product. Um, you want that to be relatively thin. I use the three inch size because these are not huge panels that I was working on. There was some detail work that needed to happen. Um, and then of course the roller tray. You need some plastic mixing bowls. Uh, do not use like solo cups and things like that. Epoxy gets very hot when it starts to, when it starts to 
uh, react chemically and it can melt plastic cups like, you know, solo cups and things like that. Also, the directions say do not use glass. So they specifically say use a non-reactive plastic. I went ahead and got cups specifically for this purpose just because I didn't want any issues with it melting or anything like that. Um, so mixing cups, paint sticks, obviously, to mix your epoxy. The other thing I will remind you is get a lot more of this stuff than you expect in terms of the disposable materials because you're going to need to do three coats on each side of your wood and each coat needs to cure for at least an hour in between, which means that you're gonna go through a lot of these rollers and trays and things like that. The other things that you need are definitely gloves. Do not get the stuff all over your hands. It, it does make a mess. And also pro tip, don't touch your phone when you have this epoxy on you. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Definitely, definitely wear gloves. And ideally, you should think about wearing a mask or a respirator as well. It does give off some fumes. And you really don't want to be breathing that in. The other thing that you want to have with the epoxy is these pumps. It is so much easier than pouring it out and trying to measure it by volume or by weight or anything like that. Just use these pumps. It will make your life easier. That's the materials list. I'll put that right here on the screen as well so you can screen capture it if you want. I'll stick it in the description too. So now it's time to mix up the product and get to work. This epoxy, as I mentioned, is a one-to-one -one ratio with the hardener. So you do 10 pumps into the cup with the epoxy and then 10 pumps into the cup with the hardener and you're good to go. I'm using the pump system um, just because it's simpler, I think, than trying to measure everything. And this is the hardener. If you get these pumps, make sure that you check to see which one is the hardener that you have. I have 205 hardener, so I've chosen the correct uh, one. Now, I'm gonna pump some out here. This is the resin, there's one pump, two, ooh, that's hard, <laughs> three, 12, 14, 12, I'm not going to do too much because I'm starting with just a very small piece of um, plywood. Now we'll do 12 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now we stir this for at least a minute. And you'll see it starts to change colors a little bit. It gets this kind of pinkish, peachy color. You want to give this a really good thorough stir, at least 60 seconds, 90 is better. Uh, just give it a really good stir. Try not to incorporate too much air into the mixture as you're stirring, but you want to incorporate that hardener and that resin together fully. Okay, I'm going to pour it into my little tray. Try to get all of that out of there. One thing to be aware of when you're putting sleeves on a roller is you don't want to go all the way to the end. You want to give yourself a little bit of room for that roller to stand away from the sleeve handle like that, see? The reason for that is that you get a much more even result. One thing about epoxy resins is that you have very little time, working time. Um, your working time depends on the temperature outside. So I only have about 12 minutes of working time on this, I think. So what I've done here is I'm using a thin foam roller. 
I make sure that it's fully coated and then I use the little bumps in the tray to make sure that it's even and then I just want a thin even layer with the grain first so I go with the grain get that as thin as possible and as even as possible I get a little bit more resin on my roller do the same process make sure that it's evenly coated on the roller and then I go at 90 degree angles now I went a little too thick there so I'm gonna to have to come back and smooth that out okay I went at a 90 degree angle and then one more time You just want to make sure that this is a pretty thin, even coat. There we go. And that's the first piece. I have several more pieces to go. When you're working with something like an epoxy resin, it's important to remember that many thin coats is much better than one thick coat. So three coats, each coat has three passes. So with the grain, against the grain, with the grain, and then let that set aside for about an hour until the surface is tacky when you touch it with your glove, but it's not really coming off onto the glove. Then you know that it's at a tack stage. I'm not sure of the exact technical term for that, but that's the right time to put on your second coat. After your second coat, you wanna leave that for about an hour as well, get it to about the same stage, and then you can put on that third coat. So after your third coat is on, you wanna set that aside somewhere where it can dry for about 24 hours. Then when you come back to it after 24 hours, you're gonna flip it over, do the second side and the exact same process, three coats, three passes each, and then let it set for 24 hours. After 24 hours, everything should be completely cured. And by the way, make sure you're paying extra, extra attention to the outside edges of your plywood because those are the most vulnerable to water infiltration, obviously. What I'm gonna be doing with these edges is trying to hit them on every run through at least once. Because obviously the edges are where water can infiltrate easily. So we want to watch out for that. Once everything has fully cured for about 24 hours, you're ready to start sanding down the epoxy. And that is going to be in part two, how to sand it down, prepare it for painting, get it painted, add some trim and finish it out. So thanks you guys for tuning into this video. I hope it was informative for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Definitely hit subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get notified as soon as I post part number two, which is finishing up. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you later.